Hi there. Welcome to Xamarin University. My name is Mark Smith, and I'm going to walk you through a lightning lecture on drawing shapes in Google Maps. Our goal is to continue from what we discussed in Android 2.30, where we talked about adding Google Maps to your application, and specifically how to interact with Google Maps. We're going to then extend that and talk about how you can now add in different shapes to be able to draw things on top of the map. Now, as you might remember from Android 2.30, Google Maps supports marker annotations. These are small balloon tooltips that can be placed on the map. It also supports drawing other types of annotations in the forms of circles, polygons, lines, and tiles. And these can be placed on top of the map or overlaid on the map with custom features produced by your application. So here you can see a park with a set of custom layers drawn to show paths and points of interest for people who are in the park. The shapes you build work very much like the markers that we created in Android 2.30. They're added through a unique API on the Google Map instance. For example, circles are added through the add circle method. And they're defined by a center point and a radius in meters. Polygons are added through add polygon. These are closed shapes defined by a set of coordinates. And it can be filled or you can have them be transparent with holes. Polylines are added with add polyline. These define an open shape, drawn with a set of line segments, again from a set of points. This is what we'll be using, and it's often used to highlight routes. And finally, you can use Add Tile Overlay. This allows you to add bitmap annotations onto the Google Map. For example, you could pull down a set of custom tiles from a server to then display graphic annotations on top of the map. You can do these actions at any time. For example, you could do it as a result of a user interaction where the user taps on the map, or you could display it as part of the map initially being displayed, or you can even use it as layers where perhaps you have an options page where the user selects different things that they'd like to see on the map. When defining these shapes, you're going to use a specific options class which exposes a Fluent API to describe the data for the shape. Each shape that you create has unique options to fully capture the data necessary for rendering. Here you can see the different types of options that we would use to be able to create the shapes that you just saw on the previous slide. So as an example, here we're adding a circle to the map. First, we're going to create the circle options, supplying the center point, the radius in meters, and the color that we'd like to use. We then take this circle options object and we add it to the map using add circle. This returns us an actual circle object that we can interact with to show or hide. To add bitmap images, we use the ground overlay options and then we add it to the map using the add ground overlay method. This is similar to the image markers that we used in Android 2.30 except ground overlays are transformed along with the map. So when you rotate or zoom the map, the ground overlay rotates and zooms as well. If you recall, that was not true of image markers. They're fixed in size, no matter what the scale of the map actually is. When you create the overlay, you can specify the size as either a set of pixels or as a bounding box. Finally, we can draw lines on the map using the Polyline Options class. Here, we add one or more line segments with the Add method. This can take one or two points to allow for a full line segment or a continuation of a previous segment that's been created. This is exactly what we would use if we were overlaying a planned route on top of the map, which, in fact, is what we're going to do. Before we do that, however, I want to cover one other thing. Google exposes another API for managing directions. You can get the documentation to this API using the URL that's provided here on the slide. But the basics are that it's a RESTful web service where you pass in the start and ending location coordinates or addresses and the system will return you one or more routes back to get from point A to point B. There are a couple things to note about this API. First, Google prohibits you from using this data on anything other than their maps. I don't know exactly how they enforce this, 
but it's likely that the coordinates that they're returning wouldn't match up to other vendors' maps anyway. Second, you can't use this API to create live turn-by-turn -turn applications. Finally, with the free version that we're going to use, you can only send 2,500 addresses per day. If you try to send more, the service will respond with the status of request denied and no results will be returned. Make sure, before you use this application, that you read the terms of service. Again, be warned that real turn-by-turn -turn direction apps are prohibited by the licensing agreements. So let's try this out together in an application. You can download the source code for this application along with this video. So here I am in Xamarin Studio on the Mac. You can also use Visual Studio in Windows if you choose, or Xamarin Studio in Windows. Any one of those environments will work just fine. I'm going to be using the same application that we built in the lab for Android 2.30. So you can see this is just our Droid mapping application, and I have references to the Google Map support, the Google Play services that we used before. Now I've added one other source file to this project, directions.cs, and this is just a simple wrapper around the Google Directions API that I introduced just a moment ago. And so you can see that it's just a static class that I named Directions API. And it has a URL here to be able to get to the Google APIs. Again, this is just a RESTful web service. And so I've created two methods here, get route that takes two lat longs, start coordinate and end coordinate, and a get route that takes two st a start address and an end address just as a string. Both of these return a task of directions. This is again, just a class that I've defined here that contains an array of routes, a status for the success, and then a method that actually just tests that status against OK to return a success code. Each route has a bounds, has a copyright, and has a set of route legs. So you can see I'm just using uh, json.net here, which you can also see a reference to in my packages, to be able to parse this out because this just comes back as JSON. You can look at the documentation that I showed you on the slide and compare it to the class if you'd like to figure out a little more about how to use this API. Be aware that I didn't implement every single feature that's supported in the Google Directions API, just enough to get the information that I needed here. But you're free to take this and build on it if you'd like to use this uh, API in your own applications as well. So my goal is to be able to use the Directions API and be able to take our current location and then be able to plot a route to some other location on the map. Now let me just show you what we have so far. When I run this application, you'll see that it just is exactly where we left off. It displays the map and it shows my current user location here on the map. And so what I'd like to do is go ahead and add in some code that when I tap on the map, it'll actually plot a location from wherever the current location is to the new location that I just tapped. So to do that, we're going to come down here to our onMapReady method. Remember, this is called when the map is actually ready and it's being displayed. And I'm going to add in a map click handler. So let's just say map click plus equal, and I'm going to go ahead and create a method. We'll call it onShowRoute. And I'm going to go ahead and use the Xamarin Studio refactoring support. And again, you can use Visual Studio as well. It has the exact same refactoring support built into it. So in my onShowRoute method, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get the directions from my last known location to the current location where we've just clicked. Now I already have a last known location. You can see it down here. When my location changes, I'm tracking that in this last known location property or field here in my class. And so I'm going to go ahead and use the directions API. I showed you the method that was there. It is an async method, and so I'm going to go ahead and put an async onto this class, and what we're going to get is a set of uh, results here. And so we'll just say await directions API, get route, and what I want to pass in is my last known location and my current point. And so that just comes off of the event args that was passed here, the map click event args. And then we can say if this was successful, then we want to do something with the results. So what do we want to do with the results? Well, I would like to plot a route. And so this is going to potentially come back with multiple routes. 
And so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a list of polylines. And the list of polylines is going to be able to display that polyline on the map itself. I'm going to call this plotted routes. Then I'm just going to create a set of colors. I want to map each, each one of the possible routes in a different color. And so we're just going to create a nice little list of colors here. So we'll say color red, color blue, color green, and maybe color yellow. Then if I'm successful in my route, what I'd like to do is go ahead and, and use the API to create the polyline, but it's possible that I already had a route. So as a first step, let's just take our plotted routes and let's just get rid of them all. Now, the way that we do that is we're gonna take each polyline that's been created and I'm gonna just gonna call polyline remove. So the shapes themselves that you add to the map, if you'd like to remove an added shape, there's a remove method on the object that was created. So when we create our options and we add it to the map, that hands us an actual shape object, a circle object, a polyline object, etc. And you can interact with that object, uh, for example, to change its color or position, uh, or we can use things like the remove method to actually take it off of the map itself. And so if I've already got a plotted set of routes, when I tap the map again, we'll throw them all away and take them off the map then let's go ahead and get rid of them. So once all the objects are gone, we can clear the plotted routes list and, and throw them all away. So let's first position the camera so that we can kind of get a sense of, of the actual routes themselves. And so I'm gonna create a camera update. And this is what we did in, in Android 2.30. So we're gonna use the camera update factory and say new lat long bounds and I'm gonna take my result, routes, and let's just take the first route and grab the bounds. So the bounds actually describes the overall bounds for the route itself. It gives me sort of a box that's around it. Uh, and then let's go ahead and, and position us above that route so we can see the entire route within the map itself. And we'll call animate camera and pass in that position. So now our camera is going to zoom out to be able to display the entire route that's been created. And let's just walk through the routes and add them in. So we're just going to use a for loop here. We'll call index. And we want to go all the way to result routes link. So this is just an array. And I want to make sure that the index, that we have enough colors to actually display it. So we'll go ahead and check our colors our color length as well. And let me just move this down so that we can have it on one line here. And then we'll increment our index. So inside this for loop, let's go ahead and grab the route. For that index, let's go ahead and get a color for that index. And IntelliSense keeps wanting to be helpful, but it's not really that helpful there. So we'll grab our color. And actually, I'm going to rename this. In fact, let's go ahead and use the rename feature. And that way I can use the word color here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and create our polyline options. And so we'll say polyline data is equal to new polyline options. And this is a fluent API, which means that we create the object and then we can just start invoking methods on it. And so we'll say invoke color to set the color and that's gonna be the color that we've picked. And so I'm gonna say color ARGB and we'll pass in uh, a partially transparent color here. So I'm gonna set the alpha on this, color R, color G, and color B because often routes have um, they overlay on top of each other. So I want to be able to see that. And then let's just go ahead and set the width. And I'll set the width to 10 here just so that we can see it. Okay, so there's my polyline. Then what we can do is we can take this polyline options and we can add in each one of our points. So a polyline is really a set of coordinates that we'd like to create. So let's go ahead and take the route 
So we'll say chord in route dot uh, overview polyline chords. And so this is a property that I created in the directions class. And what it does is it decodes the JSON.NET data and turns it into a set of lat long coordinates. And that's exactly what we would need in order to display this. And so we'll take these coordinates and we'll just add them to our polyline data. So notice there's an add and there's also an add all. And so we'll just use this to be able to add the coordinate into the polyline. Now we've got our polyline options. The last step is, the, is to then add it to the map. And so let's take our plotted routes. And so this is our list and add um, from that the add polyline for our polyline data. Okay, so let me just break this down a little bit. In fact, I'll make this even a little bit simpler just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a polyline by adding it to my map. And then I'm gonna take that polyline and I'm gonna add it to my list. Because remember, we wanna track that here so that we can remove them off the list and clear it up here. And we're gonna do this for each one of the routes that was returned to us. All right, and that's all there is to it. So if I run this now, And what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll say, let's see, uh, how could we get to, kind of zoom in a little bit, say to the missions district here. And you can see that the map animated, it zoomed in to be able to include the route and I can see my plotted routes here. So here's a red one, here's a green one. You can see the blue, blue ones here that overlaid part of that. So the green and blue were overlaid up here. Let's actually take it and go to, let me kind of back out here. And let's say that we wanted to get to Berkeley. So I'll tap over here. So notice here I only have one route. And so the Google directions only gave me one route because really we have to go across this bridge. There's really no other way to get there. And so I only have one route coming in. Let's say I want to get to the Maritime Historical Park. So again, I'll tap here, and now you can see I get three routes here as well. So we have our red route, we have our blue route, they overlay here slightly, and then we have our green route, and you can see the green and the blue overlay. So what you're seeing here is we're going to the Google Directions API, we're getting a set of routes, we're taking those routes, turning it into coordinates, and then using polylines to then overlay on top of our map. I hope you've enjoyed this lightning lecture. You can download the sample app that I just showed you from the Xamarin University website. Thank you very much and have a great day.